The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where your clients have the best wealth technology at their fingers. With NetWealth's next-gen client portal and mobile app, clients can view and manage their portfolio, assets, and accounts wherever they are. By adding external bank and property feeds to their NetWealth account, they can get a true picture of their wealth. And by giving them the ability to transact and manage their cash, they can feel in control of their wealth. A world of client engagement awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Today, we've got an update episode with Andrew Gardner from RetireMap. If you're unfamiliar, RetireMap is planning and modeling software that's a lot more interactive and collaborative than traditional tools. And it takes away a lot of the guesswork and heavy lifting through its wizards, and it aims to reduce overheads and increase productivity. I also think RetireMap's a great tool for newer advisors or those completing their professional year because it has the guardrails to the point where almost all strategy considerations have been accounted for with every associated input. It's also a great way to bring multi-divisional practices together. For example, accountants and financial advisors using it for tax planning, which is very relevant this time of year. I started by asking Andrew what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. I don't use a lot of old tech because I try and keep up to date with the newest tech that's available. But uh, one that comes to mind is t- the Tracker CRM. I I got that many years ago and um, and, and I kept it on board because I liked it and I've still got it, but I don't use it. I've just up- updated more recently in the last six months to HubSpot and found that okay. HubSpot is, is fantastic. It uh, does some amazing things. And the challenge is always how do you get the most out of it? But yeah, the mm. tracker is it was a great piece of uh, CRM technology back in the day, and uh, you know it, it, they haven't updated as much as some of the others. Still, it's still a good one. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I think with tools like HubSpot, it's a, sort of a bit like what you're doing with Retire in terms of everything's sort of modular, and you can use those sort of tools in isolation as well. So it seems to be where the world's going. Speaking of where the world's going, I guess, in, in terms of AI, are there maybe one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life? Yeah, AI is really interesting and it adds a lot of value. And I think what it does is refine what you can do so much better than what it is in the original format. I've always spent many, many hours working through copy and trying to get the copyright, particularly yeah. marketing copy and communication yeah. copy. So when I'm writing to clients, one of the things I do a lot now is use um, AI to refine what I'm writing and to make sure there's not just a better way of expressing what you're trying to communicate to the client in the clearest and most accurate way. So I find that's the most interesting way. Another thing that I use is Loom videos, and I yeah. use that to uh, create tutorial videos for clients and show them how to do specific functions with RetireMap. And they've got AI there embedded into Loom now where it creates an overview of what the conversation is about. And I go through and refine that just a little bit. But AI is terrific and I think it's going to have a really good positive effect on business and the way we communicate with each other. Oh, definitely. No, I think that is a really good application of AI. I use Loom as well and just even when it's getting rid of those, you know, ums and ahs, as well as providing that synopsis and, and AI summary, it's really helpful. Um, so, Retire Map, welcome back for round two. Obviously, with a different host now, Andrew, it's been 10 or 12 months since your last rodeo. But for those that aren't up to speed, Retire Map, where does it sit in the tech stack of a financial planning or professional services firm? Since I did the last one with Peter about 12 months ago, we've done an enormous amount of work in uh, yeah. developing and expanding the capability of Retire Mac. Where it sits in the tech stack is it sits beside a CRM. So the CRM runs a practice and the CRMs are designed to do parts of the modeling. 
but where Retire Map sits is that it uh, it's, it creates an environment where the advisor can create a very interactive and collaborative experience for the client, have them more engaged than the not only engagement but engaged in the planning process in such a way where they feel a sense of ownership, they feel a sense of contribution into the outputs, and then and in that in doing that, it means that they've then got a greater sense of uh, understanding about what they've uh, worked with with the advisor and it's not just the advisor doing their thing and the uh, and the uh, and the client doing their thing but rather both of them coming together so what we build into uh, retire map is the ability for that engagement to happen so it sits nicely beside the CRM and provides that in-depth picture of where the client is at, where they're going, and how they're going to take the client to the uh, to their goals and observations, uh, goals and objectives. Brilliant. And I love an origin story, so I'd love to just get a refresher on how it sort of came about and, and what made you build it. Well, that's an interesting story. I uh, I got into uh, financial planning or in the financial services industry in uh, 2000 and started in the finance sector and then added financial planning in the early 2010s. And when I got into the financial planning, which was became my preferred and the part of financial services that I enjoyed the most, um, the story was that I was using technology back then that um, was common and I found it was just clunky and it stopped us from engaging with the client in the way we wanted to and it was difficult to do things on the fly and to be able to complete complex structures and we found that what we're doing is talking to the client, going away, hoping we'd interpret the uh, the conversation and their needs and wants accurately and then coming back with a solution and then hope that they hadn't changed their minds and have to go back and rework it. So it really was born out of uh, my own financial services business and the financial planning to help our advisors in the office do a better job and engage with the client in a more effective manner. Brilliant. Yeah, I've said a few times that the best tools are often built by those that have had like a lived experience or sort of sat in the chair themselves. So, it, yeah, just it's um it's great to hear yeah the origin story of of Retire Map and sort of where it is now. I guess as we sort of prepped for this episode. You mentioned to me that Retire Map is, is twice the program it was back then. So I'm really keen to sort of get into the good work that you and the team have done since your yeah, last appearance on the show. But before we do that, I need to just say that I love that you are cyber safe and cyber vigilant, especially when someone who's not Peter Diamantitis reaches out to you and also shares the same last name and invites you back on the show. I think when I reached out, you actually thought it was some sort of scam or phishing email, uh, Andrew. Yeah, it was. It was interesting because I I saw the email come in and I thought, geez, this is weird. Uh, Patrick Gardner, Andrew Gardner, spelled exactly the same way. You And what I grabbed my attention was the fact that you come from Tasmania and I've got relatives in Tasmania. Uh, but I was just a little bit concerned that maybe there was some kind of um, weird thing going on there. So I actually checked the website out that uh, manually inputted the uh, the URL. And I think I even rang your office and said, hey, is this real? And they said it was. It was only when I got your receptionist at the office and said, yeah, 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 there is a Patrick Gardner and he is doing these. And then I thought, okay, about moving forward. But, uh, yeah, I was a little bit cautious there and uh, because it was quite a generic email that was sent out. And honestly, yep. God, as a tech company, I get about a dozen uh, emails from overseas operators that want you, mm. want them to give you the, the keys to your program and go in there and do whatever they want to do. I can't believe that anyone would do it and why they still do it, but I guess some do. Yeah, I'm with you. No, thanks for um, coming on the journey with with that sort of story there. And yeah, you know, maybe maybe this episode is still part of that scam. You know, I've blown my cover in terms of when I ask you for the three numbers on the back of your card after this. Um, no, that's it's that's very funny. But yeah, maybe I need to stop sending such generic emails. But yeah, back to the the main event, Andrew. How would you define, I guess, the nature of work or updates that's happened over that last sort of ten to twelve months since the last episode? Well, it's interesting. Retire Map started out as probably a more property centric program back in the very early days. And we moved away from that because we wanted to make it a fully rounded program. 
when I did it with Peter, I think we had just released the Entities module, and the Entities module was uh, was a, a major development. It took us many months to uh, to build that and build it into a way that uh, the that financial planners could use it in an efficient manner with their clients. So it created the opportunity to be able to create structures very quickly and easily with the client on the spot, mm-hmm. and then to be able to do distributions from the trust and through to a company, through to a bucket company, and then back to the individuals. So that was a major development that we'd just released at the time we did that. What The biggest development that we've done uh, since now is uh, rebuilt and overhauled the entire SMSF and super com- module that we've got in RetireMap. So what we're able to do now is, and we're releasing it tomorrow night as luck would have it, So, uh, which is uh, Thursday the th- 21st of March. So by the time this goes to where it'll be out there. It allows us to build multiple SMSFs. So that's important because often there'll be people in business who have an SMSF for their family and then a separate one for their business to buy the business premises. And being able to build those separate SMSFs, it means that assets can then be attached to a specific SMSF and treated accordingly. We've also built into it uh, red flag warnings, warnings. So in the event that an advisor has inadvertently exceeded any of the caps or breached any of the rules, a warning will be issued. It won't stop them and it's not designed to stop them, but it will give them a warning to rethink. We've built into it the uh, bring forward and the carry forward rules and also the uh, the ability to, as I say, link specific pro- assets such as properties to a specific SMSF. And so that, that's that been a big one, and there's a lot more to it than what that brief overview. And it also affects other elements of Retire Map as well to bring it also up to the uh, to the best condition that it's been in. And uh, we're very excited about that. We've got a number of other innovations that we're working on as well that we'll follow on immediately after, but that's, that's probably the biggest one, two huge modules. Uh, so where we really excel and where Retire and Apps shines is when uh, advisors get into those really complex, deep areas of uh, structures and entities and, uh, and also SMSFs. And uh, just over the last few weeks I've been working through a client myself who has got a major um, business operation. He's got one large business worth 20 million and then he's got another six other subsidiary business. He owns a dozen properties. He's got I think nine entities in all with multiple layers of distribution and uh, that's been able to be handled quite comfortably. So uh, yeah, come a long way over the journey. Brilliant. Like even when you're talking about sort of SMSF modeling, like one SMSF Sometimes that is too much for other modeling tools, but to hear that you can handle multiple in sort of one family group is it's, um, it's pretty significant. Yeah, it's a very exciting thing. And when we build onto that ex- uh, external parties, so the external members and those sorts of things, and one of the things we're looking down the track just a little bit is to create the ability to do intergenerational wealth uh, distribution as well. And uh, that will then have an appeal to uh, to private family uh, offices. And uh, But that's down the track a little bit because that's a big job to do that. But it's something we've certainly got in our books to do that because when we built Retire Map back in the day, most of the CRMs built from the bottom up and built for, for mum and dads where the masses of a lot of planning practices work. We came from a different direction because my practice was predominantly high net worth individuals with more complex structures. And so Retire Map was built more from the top down where we started with the complexity and those more sophisticated structures and working our way down into the space of like age pension, that sort of thing has been included in more recent times as well. Okay. So uh, we just came from a different direction. Yeah, nice. So would you say that in that sort of last 10 to 12 months that you have sort of doubled down on those complex or you've sort of really carved out that niche even more? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's been a real focus. And I reckon that we had about 80% of the program come from the practice that I had. And then we went to the market and we actually had a very, very long um, trial period, if you like, or development and refinement period. So Retire Map has been fully operational within the industry within a very limited scope of users over, since uh, September 2019. 
and um, I was working with a group called Intralink in Melbourne, and uh, they work with higher net worth individuals. And a lot of the information we had came from the likes of Intralink and others that work in that space that were looking for specific capabilities that the platforms don't offer. And CRMs, yeah, they've got a big job to do, which is running practice, and, the, and they've got so many different functions that to go into the detail and the nitty gritty of some of these more complex things is uh, is a di- uh, diversion of the resources away from the main game. So what they were looking for was the ability to handle these more complex structures. So we create the ability where a structure can be complete can be built and created in just a few minutes. So you can you can have a business link it to the its ownership to uh, multiple different entities and then to build those entities into structures where they then um, allow for the distributions to be funneled down into the relevant beneficiaries and stakeholders and do that just by clicking buttons and a wizard that you set the parameters around what the most tax efficient means is and what, what the advisor wants. And literally within about 15 seconds, you can do 30 years worth of distributions uh, down to the beneficiaries and stakeholders using the smart wizard that's designed to do that in an efficient and uh, an interesting way and then be able to show those outcomes to the clients on the spot so that the client walks away with the definitive plan and the advisor's got that definitive plan to work with and take forward. Brilliant. Like I love how Retire Map, especially in the video that you sent me prior, like it was about 15 minutes, but you would absolutely cruised through, you know, several different sort of strategy considerations. And yeah, it really feels like all sort of possible strategy considerations have their own special place or wizard in Retire Map. And it's categorized really nicely as well. Like one example of many is you've got a downsizing or upsizing wizard within that personal planning section or module. And what I really like about that is you've 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 thought of every possible expense or every possible input associated with a strategy like this. So you don't just get or end up presenting a big number with no context to clients. Um, what, what's sort of been the approach there? Because I think the wizard component or the modular nature of retirement, retirement map is actually overlooked because it's really guided and just makes the complex simple. I've got to give a lot of that credit to my lead developer. He's amazing. A young guy is uh, barely 30. He is an absolute genius when it comes to coding, Eric Turk. And I've uh, worked with him since uh, since 2019, and he's just the joy to work with and the brilliance he comes up with. So I come up with this, uh, this high-level big idea, and then he takes that idea and granulizes it into the nuances that that mm. comes that, that produces the end result. So where this uh, downsizing they're talking about, it does both upsizing and downsizing depending on the choice that you make. And it pre the wizard pre-populates the data, so it pulls it out of other elements of retire map and pulls it together in that specific location. So we started off that the downsizing was just the ability for someone to upsize and downsize their family home. And it does it in three steps. It pre-populates everything. We've also developed an algorithm where we're able to pretty accurately predict the value of a property into the future using past experience. And then it can be overridden by the advisor and the client should that be a peak, a, a spike in the market or a drop in the market. But it does do that. It amortizes the debt down including additional repayments, and then it comes up with with this net figure. And then we also then combine that with the downsizer contribution, which came back from the advisors that we're working with and saying, wouldn't it be nice if we could downsize this, downsize this property, click on a button, take us straight into the non-concessional contributions page and make that contribution and highlight the row for the year that it happened. It might be 2035, that property is being sold. What's it worth then? What's the debt? What's the equity position? What are the selling costs? Uh, even right down to the moving costs, that sort of thing. Click a button and there we have it. We've got the downsizer contribution uh, loaded into it. And we're automating that with this new this new module upgrade that we're doing and releasing mm-hmm. tomorrow night. We're automating even a bit more of that so that 
uh, retirement map will then assess the eligibility that the client has towards the um, the ability to access that downsizer contribution, and it will automatically preload what that is for the advisor to look at and say, we can make that a bit more, we, we need to make that a bit less depending on the client circumstances, how much funds they have available to them, and nuance that in, in a few seconds. So um, click on a button and the whole thing is done for you as it walks through this uh, this clever wizard. Brilliant. I think, yeah, what I also love about that is you're directly and indirectly creating prompters and guardrails for basically any team member in the business. And so you actually reduce the risk of someone creating a projection, leaving out significant variables or assumptions, and also creates a level of safety too. And you don't have team members going through sort of 10 scenarios with a fine tooth comb line by line or year by year going, what have I missed in this scenario, et cetera. And yeah, it just creates a, a consistent experience and outcomes for clients and basically it just becomes a platform that enhances like trust and safety as a team member, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's designed to uh, make the advisor more confident that they haven't missed anything. They haven't uh, missed an opportunity to optimize things and and also to walk them through that process and hey if you've gone outside those guide rails uh, this is a little warning here to bring you back on track or maybe there's a reason so one of the things that uh, retire map does now that it didn't do in the past is the ability to automatically create an account-based pension so yes. you're able to go into a wizard there and basically click on a button and it will then create an account-based pension with minimal input. We're talking about probably one number to insert into what you want to be maybe left in the accumulation account after everything's been shifted out to transferred out or commuted out to the pension account. Maybe you want to leave a dollar in there, a thousand dollars, or maybe nothing at all. Yeah. But it won't let you exceed the uh, uh, the transfer balance caps. And uh, unless you deliberately tick a box to exceed that, and that's assuming that there's some reason why uh, your circumstance for that client is different to the ordinary. And uh, so it gives that flexibility to do it, but it also provides the, uh, the, the roadmap for, to the advisor to say, hey, uh, let's think about this. Are we right or are we outside the rules? Yeah, no, exactly. And it's great that you've got that sort of functionality as well for those yeah, advisors or advisor that's sort of stepping outside those guardrails, but with those warnings and those red flags that you've alluded to there too. Uh, do you mind if we talk about sort of metrics and sort of charts and graphs or the outputs? Like in traditional tools, once you've done the model, you have basic metrics or summary outputs like net position, net income, the tax liability, total debt. But then you somehow have to sort of retrofit that to, or so that clients can actually visualize where their goals or objectives are being achieved. So it's just, usually it's just a sort of a spike or, yeah, spike or a trough in expenses or income or the net position. Do you mind taking us through some of the metrics that you can overlay? I think there's 17 of them um, to ensure that the modeling is actually meeting client goals and objectives. Yeah, good question. The, the plan comparison uh, report is something that we've added on in the last probably about four or five months, maybe six months we added added that on. And where that came from was, again, feedback from a, an advisor who said, wouldn't it be great if we can compare, say, the original plan that was done against today and each year subsequently? Or wouldn't it be great if we could overlay the no advice plan to with the with advice plan and against these metrics? We've now expanded that to 19. In different metrics oh, wow. um, as a result of a recent experience that we had and I think it was one hour later the uh, from the the advisor feedback uh, he said wouldn't it be great if we could have um, the total interest on this scenario against that scenario and the total uh, repayment against the two scenarios and I rang Eric and said hey can you do this and literally two hours later he had it completed, uploaded, pushed out, and uh, it was all spot on. And the advisor was wrapped with the with the result. But yes, so it's the ability to compare different scenarios against each other. So we've now added in a new capability where you literally click on a button. You can clone an existing scenario you're working on, mm -hmm. rename it so that you know what the uh, the parameters are of the new scenario with a few words, and then save it. 
uh, regenerate a whole new plan and then rework it. So it might be that you're changing the date of doing the upsizing or downsizing, changing the date of selling an investment property from one year to another, or maybe making more contributions to super, or maybe your uh, just any number of different scenarios that you can think of and overlay them. So I did one with an advisor just recently. He gave me a base plan and together we worked through it and we created five additional scenarios, each taking five minutes to do it. So in 25 minutes, literally, we had five different scenarios to compare against each other and then be able to overlay those over the 19 metrics and simply be able to uh, click on, uh, okay, what's What's the difference in the super balance over the 30 year time frame or the 40 year time frame? What is the net worth position? What is the cash flow position? What is the tax position? So some of the scenarios that it brings up and it exposes are really interesting that it mm-hmm. shows often with no advice that the, the growth path is really subdued and the returns are subdued compared to with advice. Then you right. go to the tax paid and you see that somehow the advice that's been put in and the strategy that's been put in around it uh, provides a result where the tax is actually lower than the no advice, which has got poorer results simply because of the strategies and the time and these things have been done. And I guess that's why those with advisors, particularly the really good advisors, end up so much better off than those who try to go it alone and and not get those those nuances in place about when to uh, take a course of action that might tra- trigger a capital gains tax item. So is it better to do it you know, any old time or is it better to wait to after the new financial year when maybe you can uh, bring forward some uh, concessional contributions that haven't been made and carry forward others? You know, All those sorts of nuances can make tremendous differences mm-hmm. in the tax payable under the same range of circumstances, just done at a different timing with different strategies uh, attached to it and then overlay them over each other and see the effect. And it can be enormous, can save so much money. No, that's great insight. I think too, like given the speed of being able to create scenarios and then clone them, I assume that really complements when you're doing the scenarios in front of clients and basically every meeting I've had as a now retired financial advisor is what if we did this, what if we did that? Like it's very easy to clone that on the spot and build out that and sort of leave no stone unturned or left unturned rather than saying I'll come back to you in two to three weeks and I'll do it in the sort of dark room in the corner of the office. Exactly. And that's what we were faced with back in 1914, sorry, 2014 and 2015 and 2016, that we're finding those same things that clients become disengaged if they've got to wait for weeks and weeks for each different scenario to come back to them. But to be able to sit there and have something ready as a, as a baseline to work from and then to be able to uh, click a button and create a whole new scenario and you're literally having a conversation, a chat with them. And when you when you're in that situation, it can be really quite exciting for the client yeah. to say, hey, wow, well, what about if we did this or that? Or what about if we uh, we created this environment instead of that environment? And then be able to, to do that. And five minutes later, you're overlaying it over the previous one. Oh, okay, well, uh, that's had this effect at this uh, in, in 2045. What about if we were to do it in this time instead of that time? All those sorts of circumstances make a difference. And things particularly like downsides of contributions, mm. when you make that, it just spikes the super up so much and it gets them very excited about the environment they're going to be in and how much more funds they've got available invested in a tax-free environment to be able to um, take that opportunity instead of another. Oh, absolutely. And I assume that also makes the advice team less anxious going into a meeting going, fingers crossed, this modelling that we've spent all these hours on is is sort of fitting the bill. Like if the client comes up with changes, it just means more work and more work. So that is really incredible. And just on that sort of downsizer, um, you know, massive top up of super balances, I think my favourite metric that I've seen in the list there, which is 19 and not 17, is the percentage return required to live the desired lifestyle. Like that really helps, I assume, with the risk profiling, the asset allocation discussion, considerations and trade-offs conversation, right? Yeah, actually, that one there is my favourite one. I I designed that one uh, probably about uh, eight years ago now, and it's quite a complex um, calculation to make because it's it's pre-tax, it's grossed up. 
And one of the things that I wanted to find out was when you've got your, all of your after-tax income and you've got your net disposable income, you've also gone through and you've done a 360-degree analysis on the uh, the cost of living, the, cap, the capital expenditure that you plan to have. You want to give that $20,000 to your daughter when she gets married. You want to help your son buy his first car, those sorts of things. And you take all of these things as there's probably about eight or 10 different items we take into account for the the, um, for the expenses. Then we take all of the income, combine it together, we apply all the tax benefits um, in at the marginal tax rates for the for deductible items such as accountancy, work expenses and so on. And then you get to this um, surplus or deficit before investments. And then when we see the uh, what that deficit is, it then compares that against the available funds to be invested and to see the return required is only 0.8 of a percent or 1.3 percent or 1.8 percent. But if it's consistently 12 percent, you've got a lot of work to do uh, in working closely with your client to see what you need to do. And also what sort of asset allocation, what sort of investment allocation you need to have to achieve the objectives that the client has? Is it feasible? If it's, if it's not feasible, if it's too dangerous, too risky, if they're risk adverse and they need to have a high growth all the way through, uh, that's, that's certainly one of my favorite reports to see what it is that the client needs to achieve in terms of ret- uh, return on their investments. Yeah, I'm glad you noticed that one because it's one of my favorites. It just sort of stood out to me. It's um, it's awesome. And just sort of on the on the returns and the um, the asset class and investment types, like the property investment functionality, I think even if you've got a business that isn't doing too much of that, like not a lot of advisors probably dabble or to get too involved in that property investment space. But I feel like it's great functionality to have like at a bare minimum, especially for new clients that you on board and they might already have those investments just to do at a bare minimum analysis of or projections on these assets. Like it's an objective way of determining the quality of the investment and um, getting the accountant involved or whatever entity it's involved too, right? Yeah, I don't think it's so much around giving advice on property investment. Mm. I've been in the industry now for nearly 25 years and um, a lot of clients have got property and they've, and the advisors had nothing to do with them having that yeah. property. It's just because they've gone out and bought the property because they love it. But what the advisor needs to be able to demonstrate to the client is what effect is that having on their cash flow? So when you take an example of a client that might have, say, if one or even two or three properties, that when those principal repayments kick in, the amount, the cash flow position can be absolutely devastated. So I've got an example in one of the demos that I provide to advisors that shows a client has got two properties. There's one in Burwood in Melbourne, another one in Bensdale in Melbourne in country Victoria. And uh, they're, they're both positively in profit, if you like. So they're, in fact, I think it gets up to a profit of about $22,000, $23,000, which needs to be taxed. But when you take the principal repayment out of it, it's $40,000 worse off because they've got to find forty grand to repay the principal repayment on that loan. So they're paying tax on a $20,000 uh, profit that needs to go, needs to be paid to the tax office, but their cash flow position is actually about minus, you know, 20 or 18,000 or $22,000. So they've got to make up that 20 grand and then pay tax on the profit. The advisor needs to be able to show that and demonstrate that to the client in a, in a very graphical manner so that the, adv- the client can say, well, I can see now why I'm really struggling with cash flow. I love my property, but can I afford to have this property, particularly as I get closer to retirement? So what they're able to do then is to click a button, clone it, make an alternative, sell the property in this year, that year, or another year. And then the wizard will take them through and sell that property in literally two and a half minutes. It'll have, mm. it pre-populates all of the data and brings it all together, shows the capital gains tax liability at about the one minute mark of that process. And by two and a half minutes, they've actually done all the, uh, as the proceeds allocation and it will go to the uh, entity that owns it, the property. Then you go back to have a look at the report again, and hey, suddenly you're in positive cash flow position. The returns are required are no longer at 12%, but right back at 5% or whatever that case may be. And it just gives the ability to very quickly run a scenario and see what it looks like. And then with those proceeds, what do we do with those proceeds? So we just leave it in personal investments or let's run another uh, scenario as an alternative and put it into super. What effect does that have over the longer term, over the life of a person's uh, investment 
and then see that what those scenarios are with the, the plan comparison, where they overlay them against each other with those different options. And that's what we did with the advice of the day. One of the the five scenarios was yeah. uh, was to uh, sell that property in a given year. And then where do we invest it? Leave it in personal investments or let's think through it and let's start to make some contributions. Let's optimize our concessional or non-concessional contributions and see where that fits and how that affects the tax position, how that affects their wealth position over a long period of time. But yeah, good observation on that one. Yeah. So it's a module that can obviously work standalone, but then as you sort of alluded to there uh, directly, it has massive implications across every sort of other strategy consideration as well. So that's that's incredibly insightful. Um, you've also got some interesting insight on a salary sacrifice calculations and how that's sort of planning out or panning out in the industry. Do you mind sort of telling us your approach there in the tool? Okay. What that, what that relates to is that what a couple of the um, larger CRMs have tried to do is to take salary sacrifice as a surplus allocation. So uh, we do have surplus allocation. And what they tried to do was to add in the salary sacrifice into that surplus allocation. That's a mathematical imp- uh, impossibility because what you're trying to do there is to take an after-tax cash flow position and then reinvest that back into a pre-tax position, which creates a tax deduction, which then alters the cash flow position or the surplus at the other end of it. So what it's doing is creating a circular reference over a 30-year time frame or a 40-year time frame where it's going around and around and around and trying to create uh, an end result. So that then causes those CRMs to crash. It can cause poor performance or it can cause inaccuracy mm-hmm. in the um, in those numbers. So what I found, and from a, uh, some a power planning group that came uh, that I heard about, was that um, one of the biggest ones took it out of commission, and I know another one has taken it out of commission as well because it's just too problematical and it's impossible to achieve. And they're using a goal seek. Now, using a goal seek approach means it's roughly guessing at what the outcome should be. Right. Okay. We've taken a totally different approach to that. So what we do there is that you tick a box under employment and say automate salary sacrifice. And what that does then is autumn. It then calculates what the cap is in a given year. You can index that cap and it'll chunk it up into the $2,500 uh, increments of increase. It will then see what the employer contribution is, which can be either the legislated contribution or indeed it can be overridden with a different amount, maybe 15% at a uni or charity or something like that or a government. Yeah. And then what it does is automatically allocate the uh, the difference between the cap and the employee contributions and uh, puts it into the table. So there's shadow numbers in there. And on the right-hand side, on the same screen, you see what the cash flow effect is from making that cash flow contribution. Now, when they make that contribution it could run the cash flow into the red. That is into negative numbers. So all you need to do then is to change a an $8,000 salary sacrifice back to a $2,000 sacrifice, and then it will change the cash flow position on the uh, right in front of you. And you can then work those numbers. So if the client is well cash flowed, you have a look at it. There's no red numbers. You save it, move on. But if there are some red numbers, you make some adjustments and in a, in a, probably about one minute, one and a half minute, you've completed that optimized salary sacrifice contribution and it's all been done and it's done accurately, efficiently and effectively instead of hoping that this circular reference problem hasn't <laughs> caused problems with what you've planned out and you've got incorrect numbers to work with. So we didn't try to do it as a surplus allocation in the first instance. We tried this from the first from the first step and it actually worked really well and that's thanks to Eric and the way that he was thinking and the approach that he took which worked really well and it's accurate and it doesn't affect performance never crashes and it's a very effective way of achieving the outcome that the advisors want optimizing salary sacrifice it's doing what it says on the label that's awesome and it's yeah doing the heavy lifting for you and as you mentioned if there's any discrepancies there in terms of cash flow you can easily uh, switch it up that's awesome um before we sort of move on to Uh, talking about integration in general. Have have I missed any sort of key bits of new functionality or is there anything else you'd like to share on the sort of new functionality side? 
We've got a few new things that we've uh, we've got coming up. We're doing uh, we're releasing a new module for the. We've got um, deficit allocation in a limited format just at the moment, but that's the very next thing we're starting to work on, and we're starting to work on that tomorrow. And that will take us a relatively short amount of time. So it could well be in place by the time this, uh, uh, this podcast is released. And that's going to provide great opportunities for the advisor to choose where that deficit is going to be drawn from. Uh, yep. We're also working on uh, the goals and objectives and building that into a stronger and more powerful approach where it will bring in capital expenditure over a lifetime, um, so CapEx expenses, and really refine and hone that in. It works well now, but it's going to work much more dramatically uh, and effectively as we overhaul that. We're also looking at overhauling our report system to build that into a more dynamic and exciting uh, reporting system where the Advisors are able to export in either Word or Excel. They'll be able to customize, that is, build their own reports to tell their own story in the way that they want to tell it. And we're expanding our surplus allocation into even a wider range of um, opportunities as well. So there are a few things that we've got coming up in the in the shorter term, and I expect those to be out in the uh, in the near future as well. So there's some exciting things for us going forward. Yeah, brilliant. And I assume. Like clearly you're very receptive to how users are using the tool. Is that now driving most of the development path? Like it seems like a very um, collaborative approach in terms of tell us what's working, tell us what's not, and we'll deliver it by, you know, the end of next week sort of vibes. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, we, we are using the industry as a resource to – our objective is to build the, uh, the, the planning and projection tool of choice for advisors, particularly the advisors that work in, the, in these, in these more, um, dynamic spaces and the more complex spaces of what they're looking for. So we want RetireMap to be the tool, the tool of choice, uh, for those advisors and, uh, uh, and so it is very much driving what we what we're doing. In fact, just yesterday I sent out an email to our existing clients and saying uh, this is what we're doing. And the next step, the new innovation we're bringing in is um, uh, is this deficit allocation. Have you got anything that you want us to include nice. in that? Yep. And I got I got this full page email back from <laughs> one of our advisors who went into chapter and verse. It was so good to get it because it gives us a really detailed picture about that, what this very, very sophisticated advisor is doing, their pain points, and they express what they're, up, what they're um, frustrated with for the existing software that they're using, and that we're going to build uh, a model and a module around that that will take all those pain points away and give them a, a whole new approach and a fresh approach. So we never base anything that we do in retire map against another platform but rather right. uh, what's the problem let's build an approach that works that's efficient and well designed to help the advisor achieve that outcome and not try and just duplicate what's out there with a couple of twists brilliant so it's made to order but it's for the specific niche that you've carved out which is just brilliant um, before i let you go do you mind sort of touching on i know you've got some existing integration partners or is there anything you want to add there in terms of how the tool integrates with others yeah, we uh, we've got uh, tech partnerships with uh, with IntelliFlow and also with Fin three six five and they're growth great, great partners. I'd really enjoy working with both of them. They're terrific. So IntelliFlow owns just about half the market in the UK. They're huge. Yeah. They're, they they're as big as all the others put together in the UK market, and they've got a, a very interactive approach to uh, working with their tech partners. So we enjoy working with them. Work very close with them. Fin three six five they have they're off a Microsoft dynamic uh, platform and they built a brilliant program out of that as well and they have a lot of diversification as to how that applies so they not only apply in financial planning practices but also into accountancy and mortgage brokers they've got a, a really good application and they're both great partners to work with and great platforms to uh, to operate from so uh, and we're looking to expand that partnership to others as well there's a few that we'd really like to uh, partner up with and we'll keep building that of course there's a lot of work in building the apis that go into 
um, integrating um, one platform with another. But um, we've done that on a couple of occasions and uh, we enjoy working with that. And certainly we'd uh, welcome the opportunity to work with others as well. But at the moment, there's uh, those two that are integrated. There's also the opportunity for the advisor to literally check a box. It will automatically send an email out to their client and the client can then set their own username and password and then they can literally complete their own fact find. Now, RetireMap was originally built right back in day one for the end user client to be able to uh, do their own analysis and the fact find was built around that. So it's very simple to complete. I did one just the other day with a client. He completed about 91% of the data was entered. And when we went through and uh, worked it through with the client, we found it was about a 96% accuracy rate. So it's very simple and easy to use uh, for the client to do that. There's also the ability for the client to go in and access some or none or many of the reports uh, according to what the advisor and the practice wants it to have. So when the practice set parameters are set up at the outset, the, all the uh, the metrics are put into place as to how how the program is going to work and also uh, what sort of assumptions are going to be used and also what access the advisor is going to get. And the leadership on the practice can also set what the advisors and the individual level can change or amend and what mm-hmm. they can uh, have free access to, not free access to, but what they can change yep. or not change. So, and then the uh, these are further refined. For example, the asset allocation, that's set up as to uh, the risk profiles of uh, high growth right down to defensive and they're set up that comes packaged with them, but the when it's set up, the the leadership then decides what allocations they want in terms of each of those risk profiles. Then when it gets to the individual client, there's an ability to change those to suit the client's individual needs. So mm-hmm. at the age of 65, it may not be conservative or defensive because they've got a big asset base, but may be more appropriate to take it back to growth or high growth, and that can be amended on a client-by-client basis. And then there's a, a dramatic graph that's able to to illustrate the effect that that has on the returns that the client has get, you'll see a spike in yield or you'll see a spike in growth or a drop in both. And that can be illustrated to the client at the effect that that change has on them. And then they can go and overlay those over each other with the uh, with the different alternative scenarios and see what that looks like. So they're the sorts of things that come into play there. Brilliant. Andrew, how can someone learn more about RetireMap and, and get started? Well, we work on a, on a one-on-one personal basis, so all they need to go to is www.retiremap.com.au. They can have a look at the video there that's on the homepage, and they can also request a consultation. That consultation will be done invariably by myself, and uh, we then look at providing a, a demo to the clients and seeing how RetireMap can fit their needs and what needs to uh, go forward from there. And then the support mechanism we provide is uh, we provide a range of tutorial videos to show them how to do specific functions. We provide them with an orientation training session, which can take between an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how much the, the client wants and needs. And then we have phase two of training, which is you've got a scenario, let's work together and let's help you build all these scenarios using our experiences um, as uh, practitioners in the field and help you build those to present those to the clients in a way that will resonate with them most effectively. And then there's ongoing support and tech support whenever you need it as well. So retiremap.com.au and that will give you the, the good starting point or you can call me or send me an email at andrew at retiremap.com.au. Brilliant. Andrew, congratulations to yourself and, and the team on building a great product and thanks for your time. Thanks very much. It's been a real pleasure, Pat. 